All right, y'all, so this is a really good set, right? Because here we have this, where it gives us a quadratic equation, right? And what it's actually asking is, what should the price be set in order to maximize sales? And that one used to really throw me off, right? And so we're dealing with advanced quadratics here. And here we've got this system of equation. It's asking for how many ordered pairs. And even our first one, which is going to build everything that, you know, we've got to work from, it's not asking for the solution. It's asking for the sum of the values of x that satisfy the equation. Tricky, right? So here's the deal. Let's start with this one because it's going to be the foundation for the other ones, right? So I know when people see this quadratic equation here, you look at it and you say, well, let's simplify it. So you say, let me pull out a 3 and we get x squared plus 4x plus 2, right? But there's a huge problem, okay? This is not going to simplify into anything. We're not going to be able to factor this. So that's not going to help us. All right. So what do we need to do? We need to use our handy dandy quadratic formula, right? And I'm just going to put it up here so that we have it. And we actually need quite a bit of space for this one. Okay, so the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And just remember, right, this is our a, this is our b, and this is our c. Okay, now let's do this. So Negative b, and remember, we're looking for the sum of the values, and that's what makes this a little messy. And the other thing that makes this question so good is that the radicals get a little messy, and we do need to do some you know, practice with that. So here's what we're going to have. Negative b, which would be what? Negative 12. Okay, I'm going to write a little small just so we fit everything in here. Plus or minus square root of b squared, which is again 12 squared, minus 4ac, minus 4 times our a is 3, and then our c is 6, right? 4 times 3 times 6, all over what? 2a, 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so now let's use another color. And so now what we have is negative 12 plus or minus, and here's where it gets a little messy. 12 squared is 144. 4 times 3 times 6 is 72, and then this is all over 6, okay? So now here's what's going to happen, all right? We have negative 12 plus or minus. 144 minus 72 is 72. Square root of 72 all over 6, okay? We're almost done, but it's still a little messy, okay? Negative 12 plus or minus. The square root of 72 does not break down simply, right? But you can write it as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And if you're feeling a little bit like, man, this is long, that's part of the way the new SAT is. New meaning like the past four or five years. What's happened is part of what the test tests us on is the ability to continue through tons and tons of steps. And I know this is taking a while, and some of the questions do honestly take about three or four minutes on the test now. That's just the reality of it. So anyway, we put this over six, okay? And then, let's change our colors for just a second, right? What's gonna happen is something really important, okay? So now, this can be written as negative 12. Square root of 36 is six, right? Radical two, right? And this is all over six. But this is the important thing. It's asking for the sum of the values of x, right? So now when we divide by 6, what do we get? We get negative 2 plus or minus, right? 12 and 6 cancel, give you negative 2. 6 and 6 cancel and get you what? Just 1, so radical 2, okay? So what this means is we have two solutions, all right? What are our two solutions? And let me put this in a different color to make it really clear, okay? What this means, right, what this is giving us is two solutions. One of them is negative 2 plus radical 2, right? And the other solution is negative 2 minus radical 2, okay? Because that's what we're doing with these signs here. So negative 2 plus radical 2 and negative 2 minus radical 2, right? So if you take this, okay, and you add these together because that's what it's asking for the sum, negative 2 and negative 2 is what? Negative 4, okay? Positive radical 2 minus radical 2 just cancels. So the answer is just negative 4. That's a bit of a doozy, right? But now the next one actually takes less time, but it's a little bit more conceptual. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Man, I really love making these videos, man. I, I definitely share them with people because I, I, they're so valuable and I want more and more people to see them. So it tells us the relationship between the price of a car and the number of cars sold can be modeled by this equation here, negative 3F squared plus 120F, where R of F represents the number of cars sold and F represents the price of a car in thousands of dollars. According to this formula, what price should the dealership set for the cars in order to maximize sales? Here's the deal. Anytime you have something squared, okay, it's a U-shape. It's a U-shape, okay? And if it's negative, right, if we were pl to plot it on a graph, 
it would be an upside down U, okay? So remember, our F is here and our R is here, right? Because that's, you know, our F is literally right here and our R is the result, right? So R represents what, okay? Where R of F represents the number of cars sold, right? And so we want this, our Y value, our R value to be as high as possible, right? Okay? And our F, okay, our F would be our price. Okay, that's what it tells us. Our F is our price. Now, here's the deal. Okay, here's the deal. And just to make it clear, F represents the price. Here's the deal. What is that point called? It's called the vertex, right? It's called the vertex. Now, if you have an equation, negative 3F squared plus 120F, okay, anytime you have a quadratic, what you can do is there's a shortcut for the vertex, okay, for the x value of the vertex, right? Because we really, it's asking, what is the f value? What is the price, which is the x values, right? These are all the price values, right? So what we need to do is we need to find the x value, okay, of the vertex, right? And that is given to us by negative b over 2a. Okay, negative b over 2a, as long as you have it written in this form, like the ax squared plus bx plus c, right? The same as what we had up here, right? Our a, b, and c. So what is this? This is our a, right? This is our b, okay? So negative b over 2a would be what? Negative 120, okay? All over 2a, so that's 2 times negative 3, right? What does that give us? Negative 120 over negative 6, which is just what? 120 over 6, and that is 20, okay? So what that tells us is at 20, that would be the x value, right? That would be like the x value here to get this y value. It's the x value of your vertex, like we said right here, okay? Now, let's get into the meat, the real meat of this section, okay? And it's not that this question's hard, it's just another example of like, look, the SAT is going to ask us to do math steps and quite a few of them, and it's common, right? The biggest complaint that like I get sometimes from students is like, well, that question took like seven minutes. Well, first of all, I'm explaining it, so it's going to take a little longer than just you know running through it without talking. But the other thing is that questions like this do take a few minutes. There's quite a few questions on the test that can be done in like 15, 20 seconds, but all of that time pulls up for questions like this one and the first one in this set, okay? And this is the last one, so let's do it, right? So it's asking how many ordered pairs satisfy the system of equations shown above, all right? Well, first things first. When you want to figure out the total number of pairs, you use the discriminant, okay? b squared minus 4ac, right, in the quadratic formula, this part is a discriminant, okay? Now, this is something that I want everyone to know because when I was in school, I was just told to memorize this and I would always forget. And here's what it is. The only things you have to remember, the only little part you have to remember is what are the different kinds of numbers that we have? We have positive numbers, negative numbers, and zero. Those are like the most simple descriptions of numbers, right? And so here's the deal. Just think about this. If b squared minus 4ac, because that's what we're going to work with, that's going to be the main thing that we're looking at. If that's positive, if you put a positive number under a square root, like the number 4, how many solutions do you get? You would get positive 2 and negative 2, right? So anytime you put a positive under a square root, what do you get? Two solutions, okay? Anytime you put a negative under a square root, what do you get? No, whoops, no solution, right? No solution, okay? And when you put a zero under a square root, how many possibilities are there? When you put zero under a square root, there's only one solution, which is just zero, right? So this is how you can always, always, always remember the rule for this, okay? So when you wanna know how many ordered pairs, what do you do? You use your b squared minus 4ac, if it's positive, you're going to have two solutions. If it's negative, you're going to have no solution. If it's zero, you have one solution because when you put in zero in a square root, the answer is zero. So here's what we're going to do now, okay? And this does get messy, so it's worth uh, definitely watching through because it's super helpful, okay? So here's what we have. X equals 3Y plus 3, and then Y equals this. So what we're going to have to do is combine these. So we need to plug... 3y plus 3 in for x in both of these, all right? So I'm just going to write it out like that. y equals 5 times x is what? 3y plus 3, okay? Minus 2. And then we're going to do the same thing here. 2 times 
3y plus 3, okay, plus 1, okay? And this question, this kind of question literally does show up on the test. I know you might be thinking like, no way, bro, but yes, it, it does, okay? So now we're going to distribute here, and we're going to distribute here, okay? So on the left side, we have 15y plus 15 minus 2 times 6y plus 6 plus 1, all right? And don't worry. It's actually not that bad. We're actually pretty close to being done. So y equals 15y plus 13 times 6y plus 7. Eight, and we're almost there. Now we're going to foil. So 15y times 6y. So y equals 90y squared. Uh, 15y times 7, right, is 105y. 13 times 6y is 78y. And why do we have to do this? I'm just joking. And then 7 times 13 is 91. All right. Fantabulous, as they say, as probably no one says. So now, what are we going to do? We just need to combine like terms, and we're almost at the end of this mess, okay? So y equals 90y squared plus 183y plus 91. Subtract y from both sides, okay? And we have 90y squared plus 182y plus 91. And remember, this is our A, our B, and our C, okay? So now we're finally done, thank goodness, okay? So we're gonna do our B squared minus 4AC. So B squared would be 182 squared minus four times 90 times 91, okay? And I think even if, like, even if you were, well, I don't want I don't want to give anything away. So <laughs> let's just do this, okay? So I'm going to work this out for you. So 182 squared, right, is a very large number, right? 33,124, okay? And then I'll give you like the little shortcut for that last step. And then 90 times 91 times 4, okay, is like 32,760, okay? So here's the deal. We know that 33,000 minus 32,000, whatever it is, it's going to be a positive. And what do we know? If it's positive, there are two solutions, okay? And the only other kind of shortcut I wanted to throw out to you, right, is just whenever you have a situation like this, you can look at this first term, right? And if you're squaring a very large number, right, and then you're going to be multiplying much smaller numbers, right, there's going to be a, uh, a very big difference. So it's going to be positive. But in this case, the numbers were so close, I didn't want to throw that out there because like, it, there's definitely room for confusion. All right. So definitely pause on this step. Okay. If you need to like review and, and look at it and make sure that you check out the other videos that, uh, you know, that are in my series and all of that. And and if you haven't already, make sure to put on that notification bell because I'm literally posting every day and share these with people and follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I post like new videos every day. I love you all, man. Thank you. Thank you for commenting and stuff. I love talking with you. I'm commenting with everybody like uh, today, yesterday. It's been exciting and I want to keep it up. So thank you for all the support. You're amazing. Peace.